I'm Donna Drake. And I'm Paul Ham. And we're, we're both, both on, on Footprint TV. TV. The Breakthrough Awards, the best, the best of the best of what's new in television and reality. They're going to be breaking through those envelopes any moment. We're going to find out who the big winners are this year. Stay tuned for more. So when you found out that you were going to be the MC for this event, uh, what went into the preparation for that? Well, for me, uh, you know, because I do event shows all the time, I'm, I'm the go-to for all award shows in the country. So for me, it was just uh, second nature, you know. Golden Globes, Oscars, NAPTI Awards, so for me it's just another day. Um, no, I, you know, look, I had to figure out what do you do when you host an award show, so I figured it out. There you go. Um, and what was the first thing you ever won? Do you remember? Something, a special time in your life where you're like, wow, you got a um, high yeah, school, maybe? Yeah, I mean, okay. you know, I won, you know what, I actually remember I won some sort of music award in like first or second grade, and the reason it was, it was big was because I came up with the name Verdi at like the last minute and like everyone jumped on me because my team was so excited and so I got sort of like the music MVP award. Excellent. Um, yeah, and I think that was around second grade. So, okay. that's, so that's that's my earliest memory of winning, uh, winning an award. And in this industry, who were some of the people that kind of gave you your first break? Um, well, it would have been um, Stephen Brill uh, who started Court TV um, and then uh, the NBC News uh, people. I'm, I'm someone who's been in the news business um, for my whole career, so for me it's been it's been news people and then kind of moving a little bit outside of news uh, since then. Um, so it would have been uh, Andy Lack at NBC, who's now back at NBC. Um, and um, yeah, so, but now... Uh, now A&E. There you go, now A&E, and yeah. A&E's a great place to be. It is, right? it is. It's a great place to be, and it's a great place to be right now. Uh, so it's, you know, they're just doing a lot of exciting things. They're willing to take uh, some risks, um, and uh, it's, been, it's been a great experience. Number one is I have a law and crime network, uh, which A&E is involved in, uh, which is a 24-7 court TV of uh, the new court TV, uh, which is exciting. And uh, I have a new show with Nancy Grace uh, coming out on A&E, which is going to be a, a debate show uh, with my old, uh, my old pal Nancy, who uh, always has uh, something to say. <laughs> uh. We're here today at the Breakthrough Awards, um, and you've got the wall up for an event, uh, an award. So tell us about the wall. Well, The Wall is an amazing game show, which has been doing very well for NBC. So we're very proud uh, to be here, uh, to be uh, being nominated. Hopefully we'll get an award. Uh, <laughs> but I'm here representing my colleagues from uh, Universal Television Alternative Studios, who uh, have produced the show together with our two producers, Andrew Glassman and uh, Limbron James. Yes. So I'm, hopefully, I'm hoping <laughs> to pick up an award for all of them today. And you know, a lot of, you know, they've had a lot of money be awarded from this particular show. It's kind of like the Price is Right, the board where you're, you're throwing things down and it's dancing all the way down, right? That's right. It's one of those really exciting uh, formats of which there are many around which have that kind of prime time uh, exciting uh, kind of aspect uh, to it and it's a little bit of questions but it's more about the people and that ball falling in the right places. And what, uh, personally, are you most excited about about having the longevity of the career that you've had in this industry? Well, I, I think it is about seeing that, you know, formats, they come and they go, and some original ideas come in and fresh, some older ideas. But I think it's the continuity and the new opportunities that are always coming along now with all the digital platforms and all the channels that are looking at commissioning new ideas. Um, so, and you're rooting for the wall. Is there anybody else that you're rooting for today? Well, today I'm here for the wall. All right. Yes. All right, we're living it up. Go wall, right? Woo! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> How did you find out that you were nominated uh, in this category? I uh, was contacted last week. Okay. And, yes. And who was the first person that you told? Uh, I told my staff. <laughs> and you said, guess what? Yes, right? Guess what? Um, how long have you been working in television and what was your first nappy like? 
I've uh, been in TV for 30 years. My first snappy was, I think, in Las Vegas about 15 years ago and running around. The brand that you're representing is such a large brand. What do you enjoy most about it? About Bravo, uh, I enjoy um, just the volume of shows and the way we connect with our fans and uh, the passion of our fans and, and it's just, uh, you know, the, the success we've been able to create with, the, you know, the brand. It makes people happy. People yeah. are loving content and they need a variety of content in order to, like, satisfy their brain. Would you agree? Yes, And absolutely. what makes you happy? What do you like to watch? Oh, I, li I like to watch everything. I'm a TV-obsessed person, so I watch everything that's hot and Excellent. new. Yeah. And how do you um, obtain your content? Where do you watch it? I still watch a lot on television, but I have it on my phone and, um, you know, all different devices as well. And rabbit ears on your TV with foil on them, or no? No, no, no. no I got a nice, <laughs> modern, beautiful TV. Do you remember that day? Oh, I, I certainly do. I, I also too. remember, like, unplugging the television and when you see the white light, black and white TV, and it went, yeah. People are missing that experience. I think it's up to us, Jerry, to, like, Bring tell people what it was like. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> My 600 pound life is one of the nominees this year for the Unscripted Breakthrough Awards. How are you? Well, thanks. Excellent. How did this concept come to you? What was the moment of inspiration for you? It was actually my father. He's a doctor on the show, and uh, he would call me with terrible ideas. And one day, he had a good one, but it was based out of helping people as opposed to just entertaining people. It's such a heartfelt story. I mean, you, you walk people through what it's actually like. You're living through their eyes, through their experiences. What have you personally gained by working with this? I think uh, it's helped me see and hopefully others see that uh, no one's truly beyond hope. Um, you can always pull yourself out of any situation no matter what it is. And that's what we hope you know, the takeaway is from the show too. How are you finding and securing these stories? Um, well, now we, we really don't have to find them. They're coming to us. And so there are a lot of people out there that need help. When we first started, I think um, people had gotten to that point where, for lack of a better term, were mythological. Like, they, they didn't go out. There wasn't social media. So you didn't know that there were people suffering from severe obesity like that behind walls. And so now that the show's got a lot of momentum, they're reaching out to us. And so, you know, we're trying to help as many people as we possibly can. It's television that's making a difference in the community. I just got chilled, Jonathan. It's so bizarre, but you know, um, it is that type of a show. You know, it's life changing. Your production team, um, how does that come together? Do you have like weekly meetings? How? What's the process like? Oh, gosh, I mean, there's there's, uh, there's so many episodes now. Thankfully, we've got multiple teams, and uh, it's just well coordinated chaos sometimes because. Um, everything's just moving constantly and we do have meetings I mean multiple meetings every week but it's one of those shows where you can't really plan it all out because life happens and so it's mostly just responding to what's going on in their lives and having people ready to go out constantly hence unscripted reality right? yeah. and who was the first person that you told when you found out you were nominated for this I was in the edit bay so all the editors I was with what did they say they were excited <laughs> Go bring home a winner. It's, it's always good to be, you know, we, we work hard for the, on the show because we believe in it, but it's always good to know people are out there and they appreciate it, you know. And how has Nappy helped make a difference in your life? Um, this time of year I'm usually working and so I know that it's helped uh, bring a lot of attention to a lot of shows and help a lot of brands kind of raise awareness and get out there. And who gave you your first break in the industry? I think that would be Elaine Frontaine Bryant at a &E. And she said, I like you? Uh, she said, you're good and you're fast. I like you, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And that's what it takes. It takes good, fast, but good is most important, right? Yeah, yeah. quality entertainment. Excellent. Thank you so much and good luck to you. It's a real pleasure to meet Thank you. you. Annie, a big winner here today. How are you? I'm so great. Very excited. So how did you find out that you got this award? Uh, well, I just was at the uh, show and Dan Abrams called us out. And the feeling for you? Well, it's very exciting. You know, at A&E, we were so excited even being here today. Uh, we were nominated for four out of the five Innovation Breakthrough Awards. So we're very honored. And to have Leah Remini win, it's very exciting. How did you start in the industry? I started in the industry in the mailroom in California. <laughs> and Natby, over the years, what connections have you made here? 
gosh, I've made friendship connections and I've made work connections. So um, I have never been to the Miami my, uh, Nappy, um, but I had been coming for years in Vegas and I'm excited to be here this year. And who's the first person that you're going to tell that you won? Are you going to text Leah? Um, I have already let Leah know. Uh, yes. And what did she say? I, 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 she hasn't <laughs> written me back yet, so um, I'll be excited to check that next. There you go. Bring it home a winner right here. Stay tuned Yay. for more from Natby. Thank you. Still doing the whole bag thing, and for those of you who don't know, I hold the world record for most signatures tattooed on one's back. I've worked with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Tony Hawk, Kevin Hart, Wayne Brady, Steven Tyler, uh, Gerard Butler, 50 Cent, and tons more. Um, and I've still been doing that, and now we've been uh, kind of exploding our social media and working on that with a buddy of mine over here, Alex White, who you'll talk to in a little bit. Excellent. Um, the illusionist, right? He is the illusionist. He's like, if David Blaine and Chris Angel had a weird one-night stand, he would be the result of that one-night stand. <laughs> very, very funny. Um, so are you going to like do a big reveal? Of? You're back? No, I think I'm... No, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. Some crazy music. All right. Some you crazy music. Some... Okay. Da, da, live it da, up. Da, da, da. Okay. Live it up, live it up, live it up now. That's our theme music. All right, wow. Oh my goodness. So how many tattoos do you have? On my back, I have 195. Excellent. But on my body, uh -huh. I don't know. Oh, you don't know? You didn't count the rest? No idea. Okay, really? No idea, no idea. Okay. I think it's like 220 or 219 or something like that, I think it is. All right, so All right. I'm 14 years old. Not now, but when I was 14. Uh, I got four sewing needles and sewing string, and I, I did this makeshift tattoo machine, kind of pick and poke sort of thing. And I did a peace sign, because I like peace, on the bottom of my foot. But since it's callous and it's like dead skin, it doesn't really stay for too long. So it stayed for about like two weeks, and then it went away. Um, and after that, I think my first real, real, real tattoo was at a shop in South America, Venezuela, when I was 15 or 16. I uh, like I have a blue sun here, obviously here because I was 15 and I don't want my parents to find out. Um, because it was prohibited in my household uh -huh. tattoos. Uh -huh. That's why I broke a world record. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my most recent one. Let's see, I did a, uh, okay, so there's a show called Despierta America, which is like kind of like the Spanish version of Good Morning America. And I was on there with Jackie Chan. Pretty sure you know who that guy yeah. is. Jackie Chan. Uh, and he signed my bag on the show. So that's oh, probably that's the cool. most recent one. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, and uh, my eye is tearing a little bit because we're out here in this Miami sun and I, I, and he probably thinks I'm like winking at him. crying at the beauty eye. of this man. <laughs> That's what she's doing. She's never seen anyone this sexy. I'm weeping, I'm weeping. Uh, and what is your platform now? What are you trying to do in the um, community? Because chair. I know, because I know that you're up to good things in life right now. And, and what is it that you okay, want to so do? All joking aside, I... I'm on this earth to create happiness and to make people happy and to 
inspire others to follow their dreams. So what I do is like I, I go out and do these crazy goals that I set for myself and if I'm able to achieve that then I feel like you at home and everywhere should be able to you know quit your job and go after what you really want in life. And that's what my buddy and I are, are working on right now. Grow our audience as much as possible to spread a kick-ass message, a nice message. There you go. <laughs> a happy, wholesome message. Okay, thank you very much for spending time with us. And, and I'm really not winking at you, but yes, okay, you we're, we're signing off. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned for more on Live It Up. Thanks for watching. taking you all over the world. You've seen places as a journalist that, you know, long running. Anything stand out in particular for you? Some maybe three highlights? Yeah, um, when the hostages were taken in Iran in 1979, I was on the assignment desk at ABC News, so I had been the guy that had to call everybody up at home and make them come in, because it was in the evening, and I had to call this, this young guy that worked on the uh, State Department beat, this Ted Koppel guy. So I called him up and I said, why don't you come to work? And then, you know, the who knew? Nightline became, uh, you know, a, a forever thing. So that was a big moment. The the war in uh, Nicaragua and El Salvador; those were big moments for me. It was a, it was, uh, a, you know, a real firsthand taste of extreme violence from people against people. It was something that will stay with me forever. Um, and I would then say that, um, you know, because I wasn't here during 9/11, I was overseas and. Uh, but I would say that the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina also probably affected me very deeply. So those are the three things in my lifetime that if I look back, I'd say, I mean, I could say, you know, seeing Johnny Cash live for the first time, but right. I didn't, no. you know. Right. <laughs> um, this year, you had a panel that you kind of like constructed based upon your knowledge in the industry, where things are headed. Let's talk about that. So I have a, a theory that I call, um, the next new normal, and the next new normal is this is the next phase in media from what would be called the new normal. So in the, the normal was broadcast television, the new normal became things like Amazon and Netflix. What is the next normal? So we, we have a group of, of experts, the head of uh, innovation from the Turner Networks, Jesse Redness is, is somebody who joins us all the time, Peter Naylor who runs sales at Hulu, somebody who joins us all the time, uh, we had uh, David Adler from uh, um, uh, Laduma VR, so a heavy VR, AR, MR company. We had Anastasia Lang, who was a data scientist and a neuroscientist, who has talk, talks about how data affects creative. So it's a, and it's a changing group, and we do these panels all over the world. And we discuss whatever is the appropriate thing to discuss that's making the business take stand up and look and go let's we need to know about that and what were some of the takeaways from that what was the consensus any themes that came through from that yes so um, there were highlights that were very highlights so we walked away from it saying that uh, ATSC 3.0 is a new technology that uh, that allows for broadcasters to have wider bandwidth and be able to have two-way communication, a lot of stuff you can do on the internet, uh, feed, download, operate things in your internet of things, work it all with, with voice. That's an important thing that's coming. Uh, another important thing that's coming is, you know, one in six, mil one in six Americans uh, has a, it's reported, has a smart speaker. So that could be the Amazon Alexa, or it, it could be the Sonos, which is not really a smart speaker. It doesn't really act both ways. Uh, or the new Google device. Um, so there's a business in that uh, because smart speakers are, in, and now they have smart videos. So Google makes a new one, or Amazon makes one. It's it's TV that's always on, basically that you can say it to it what to do, and it will do it. 
uh, and it will also turn on your coffee maker and turn your lights on and off and uh, open the garage door and lock the locks and uh, and and you know wake you up in the morning and and uh, you know turn you know turn some electric device on that you would normally turn on give you an alarm there's a lot of things that these things do and eventually they're all going to be a very important part of the of our entertainment and personal movement landscape so those are two things that um, that uh, that were real big and the third thing that came out of the panel basically was a negative and that is that um, nobody really sees VR as something that's going to have scale anytime in the next two years okay and why why would you feel that that would be kind of what's happening well be in VR yeah. because because the uh, uh, the adaptation of the hardware isn't isn't there yet they're not okay. making enough goggles that matter people don't like wearing the goggles because they're big and ugly maybe they'll like what uh, what um, uh, one company has done to make a pair of glasses that look very steampunk they're kind of cool um, Kind of like the big cell phones back in the day. Remember a cell phone? You like when they first came out? It was like ginormous, right? I remember that. I had I had one. It was, you know, walking down the street holding that was like walking down the street with a suitcase up to your ear. Believe me. Anyway, uh, so um, you know, those were the three headlines that that we got. Okay. And you know, and I I actually think the uh, the idea of a smart speaker and a smart TV is something worth focusing on in the industry. People are going to be getting content from it sharing content with it um, and getting recipes from it and doing all those other things I said you could do with it. And I think that that's important and that's gonna be, who knows, that could be like as big as the toaster. It could be. One thing that I've always liked about you is that I do follow you on social media uh, and we are friends so it's, it's, it's easy to follow what you're doing. And I look at you as kind of being that person that's um, expressing all of the cutting edge technology and you seem like you're never afraid of it it's like you embrace that new frontier yeah. right well, there's you know another, there's a reason for that okay because i buy it okay that's what i was gonna say it. he's got every single gadget that there is you go in his office and it's like wismos gadgets right you do and you engage in it so you like it don't tell my wife okay <laughs> don't say a word okay but um, if, if even they, your cat uses technology, I have a, I have a chip that I'm embedding in him, so I'll know where he is at all times. Uh, so he, because um, uh, you know he, he gets away. I um, uh, I will go out and buy whatever there is that seems like I should go out and buy it. And so what makes me what's called a a uh, you know a, 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 an early adapter. There you go. Uh, and but I'm also probably an early abandoner. Because I have this box, and inside this box are all these things that I no longer play with. The misfit toy box. Well, yeah. I wouldn't call them toys, but misfit maybe. <laughs> well, I thank you for spending some time with us. It's always wonderful to see you. Good to see and, you. Um, so, yeah, we'll be traveling together again. But uh, we hope you enjoyed this little intimate portrait here at Natby. And stay tuned for more on Live It Up. Live It Up. And uh, we, you sh to showed me some things that you can do, which are pretty magical. So, how uh, did this start for you? How did you start working in with cards? Um, and not not only with cards, but I started to do magic like 12 years ago, something like that. And I had a cousin, and I still have. Um, and he showed me like a couple tricks, and I started to learn things by myself. So I kind of self-thought guy and I started to learn things like reading books, watching videos on internet and I learned like this. Excellent. Now do you know like some magic. like uh, Houdini? Any any famous magicians that you know that you like um, like their careers? I think I think David Copperfield is the best for me. Okay. He's a storyteller. I think he's the it's the best in the industry, Excellent. right? Yeah. Well no, you're the best I'm now. Sorry about yeah, of course. <laughs> I am. Ta da! Okay. <laughs> um, so I asked you to come on the show because I was really impressed with um, the quality of what you can do. And so you want to show us a couple of things? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, I will do something for you. Okay, okay what's this? Um, can you see the cards, right? Actually, me too. And what's this? Um, I wanted you just take one card, but don't show me, okay? okay. Show it to the camera. Okay, I'm going to show it to the camera. Yeah. Okay, audience. 
Can you see it? Perfect. Now. Okay. Okay, watch this. I'm gonna take the car like this in slow motion. It's just like that. I'm gonna put it here, inside of the deck, just like that, like this. Perfect. Now, I think your car is a seven of heart. That's your car? No. That would be a good trick, right? Yeah. But what's this? I'm gonna take the seven, like this, in slow motion, just like that. And every time that you touch right here, the, the car is gonna be on top. Okay. Just touch right here. And now, the car jumps to the top. Now it's a tree. But this is not magic at all. You know why? Because right. I can take the tree right here on top. I'm gonna shuffle like that, right? And maybe the king is your car. No, right? No. No, right? Oh, no. Watch this. In slow motion, watch. It's the king. It's not this car. No. No? Something is wrong here. No, it's not. Watch. I'm gonna take the car like this. Can you see it? No, right? No. Me neither. It's invisible. You can see it. But actually, take the car like this. Okay. And I want that you fold the car in four pieces. Fold four pieces? Off. Yeah. Four okay. pieces. No more, no less. Just four One, pieces. Two, three, four. Four. You got it, right? Yes. Now hold it like this. Don't worry. This is gonna take only one hour. Should Let's I wait. On it? Let's wait. No, okay. just kidding. Watch. Okay. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. No. 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 Huh? No. Huh? Ah. I don't see it. No. No. Alex, I don't see it. I don't see it. No. Sorry. <coughs> mm. <coughs> you okay? <coughs> you okay? Oh. Uh oh. Four pieces. One car. That's your car. Oh, oh my god, I don't Daniel! even know how I did it! <laughs> Woo! And this is magic! Just got real! <laughs> Alex White, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Live It Up. Stay tuned. Now I have to take the car. Okay. <laughs>